Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Um, we're going to get into what Hector Garcia needs to do to try to beat Tank Davis. I'm not picking him to win. Um, I think he's probably going to get stopped, but I think he has a chance. I think he can p- keep it competitive, but we're going to get into exactly what he needs to do uh, later tonight. Uh, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Also, please subscribe to other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery for that channel. It's completely dedicated to uh, sweet science in the state of Texas. Uh, so please uh, support that channel as well. All right, let's get into um, let's get into today's show. Um, yeah, let's get into today's show. Hector Garcia is, you know, Tank Davis a 14 to 1 favorite. So the, the, the Vegas, the betting community is giving him zero chance to be competitive in this fight. To put that in perspective, Demetrius Andre, who's fighting his Uber driver, is a 16 to 1 uh, favorite. So, I mean, you can see how, how you know, if you fight a, a, a true, true opponent who you should outclass, uh, you're a 14 to 1 favorite. Uh, if you, Fight Hector Garcia, a world champion who's got quality wins, a um, couple quality wins, three quality wins. Really, you're only fourteen to one. So that, that's what they think of, of Hector Garcia at this point. Yeah, I do think Tank Davis is the best lightweight in the world. I, I, I do. Um, but let's get it. You know, he's flawed just like any other human being. He's not perfect. He can be. He can be beaten. Um, Hector Garcia is a southpaw. Um, he needs to work that jab, right? Southpaw versus southpaw. He needs the jab. Right. Um, yes, he's fighting against Southpaw, and traditionally you say, "Oh, don't jab against." No, he needs to jab against Southpaw. First of all, he's a Southpaw, so that goes out the window, um, and he, and he needs to disrupt the timing of Tang Davis. Right. Um, defensively, Hector Garcia is not good. He leaves himself wide open to be hit. That's a problem when you're fighting a guy like Tang Davis with, with that kind of power, because it just takes one. As Leo Santa Cruz, who is fighting beautifully, Rolly Ramirez saying that it takes one. Um, so you got to disrupt this time. You can't let him time you because one team does that night night. All right. So um, and he's got to he, he jabs really well. Right. He'll, like he'll throw his right hook. He'll throw his left hand and he'll jab off of that, leaving the combination. He has to do that. Right. Everyone's going to say he has to faint. He has to faint. He has to use his faint. He doesn't faint. He's thirty years old. How old is he? He's thirty years old. He's not going to. Learn to faint now of one eight-week camp at a level that he can do it against a world-class puncher like Tank Davis. Maybe pound for pound the biggest hitter in the sport. Like He's not going to come in and, and, and faint, right? Like That's not what's going to happen. So he needs to do other things. And he, he needs to push Tank around when he gets on Because he can hit. He can't hit like Tank, but Hector Garcia can, Hector Garcia can hit. He can really hit. Um, so he, what he... When he, when he lands on the inside, he needs to push Tank off and jab. Push him off. Just keep him distracted. Don't give him the same look. You know, come in, give him different looks. And, and he throws a, a, a wide array of combinations, right? Like, he's not basic. He's not jab, jab, left hand, jab, left, uh, jab, right hook, left hand. He, he mixes it up a lot. He throws a lot of, you know, four or five punch combinations. He throws different combinations. Um, he, he has to do it. He's not a body puncher, so he's not going to go to the body. He's not going to wear a tank down like that, which I always thought would be an interesting strategy to try to break tank down to the body. But to do that, you got to get in on him. Or you got to get close on him, right? Um, you know, it's a tough thing to do because you might get knocked out if you do. So we don't have to worry about that here. He's not going to. He's not going to try to break tank down to the body. So she's standing outside. Just touch him. Just touch him. Hector Garcia is kind of weird. He's like five ten, right? But he has, he's got a 67 inch reach, which is a five foot seven reach. So he's kind of short armed, right? He's not, you know, um, so that's interesting, but, but he's still longer and taller and he can keep tank at bay, right? I don't know that he can keep him at bay like Barrios did. And I guess Barrios got caught eventually too, right? Barrios is super long, right? Super tall, super long. Um, Hector Garcia is tall. He's a lot taller than tank, but he's, 
it's kind of short on. Um, so he, he's gonna he can keep him at bay in, in doses, right? Like he can't just keep him at bay and keep the jab out. He's gotta keep he gotta keep the jab out. He's gonna double up the jab, keep him out. But Tank is gonna be able to get inside because the reach man is not what it was against Barrios, right? So he's gonna be able, Tank's gonna be able to get on the inside. When he does, uh Hector Garcia needs to smother him, he needs to land, push him back, walk him backwards, right? Keep him going backwards, keep tank going backwards. Now tank him. Can, can box going backwards? He he proved this. Tank proved this in the Isak Cruz fight. He did it pretty well. It's not as what he does, but he can do it, right? Um, he, he can. Um, so that's why I'm saying keep him uncomfortable. Keep him guessing. If you force Tank to box off the back foot, you're not guaranteeing you're, you're going to win. But if you don't, you're guaranteeing you get knocked out because that's Tank Davis. So. Um, ideally, you know, he has to keep him off the back foot. Keep him guessing. Keep him smothering. Just don't let him get comfortable. Don't get. Don't let him get in his rhythm. Um, and try to be defensively responsible. You go back and you watch a lot of Hector Garcia. His it's it's it, 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 it's hands down, chin out in the air, right? Especially when he's throwing the left hand. I mean, his hands just drop. He naturally keeps his hand low anyway, and I hate that. Keep your hands up, especially when you find a. a a boxer like Tank Davis, right? Hector Garcia is not so freakishly athletic that he could just, you know, make you miss. He, and he eats shots, right? He got dropped by uh, Isaac Avila early in that fight, I think in the first round, off a hook. You know, he left himself open. He got dropped with a hook. He got hit, hit a lot in that fight. And Isaac Avila is a good fighter, and, and I give him credit for that win. It's a good win, especially that stage of his career. But it ain't Tank Davis. <laughs> it's not Tank Davis. So you get hit with those kind of shots that he got hit with Avalar with with Tank Davis. It's gonna be. It's not, it's not gonna be a long night. It's gonna be a really short night. Um. So uh, disrupt his rhythm. Push him backwards. Don't let him get momentum. That's really what it comes down to. Is don't let him get comfortable. Don't let him get momentum. Mix up your combinations, right? And be defensively responsible as you can. Look, naturally he drops his hands. Naturally he's he, that's got to be drilled, 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 right? Like if, if, that has to be done by now. That has to be second nature. You've got to get defensively more responsible. This is not Chris Colbert. This is not Isaac Avalar. You're fighting. This is not Roger Gutierrez. This is a a a, a once in a generation knockout artist who can knock your head off with one shot. Um, so you, you, you can't get hit with it. Right. And, 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 and the way to not to get hit is that it's just to keep him uncomfortable, push him around, keep him uncomfortable, double it up, jab your way in, jab your way out. When you do get on the inside, cause he's going to get on the inside, land your, uh, land your right hook, land your left hand, push him back, move, push him back, move, right. Tie him up, smother him. Don't let him get off. Right, because this fight's gonna be this isn't like Barrios where you can say, okay, just keep the fight on the outside, Barrios. He's not that long. He doesn't have that massive reach advantage, even though he is five inches taller. He doesn't it, he's short arms, so he's not gonna have that. Now he's longer, right? So he he can move out of the way, but he's also really not a mover that much, right? Um he, he likes to come straight in, right? He jabs and straight in. So he can do this, but he's gonna have to fight a perfect fight. I say he can do it. He can make it competitive. It's going to be real tough for him to beat Tank Davis. I'm just kind of laying out what he can do, what gives him his best chance. Um, he's got snap, so he's got to find a home for the left hand. The, the, uh, the left hand is good, and then when he throws it and he lands it, jab again. Don't get countered. right? He gets countered a lot, like I said, with Avalon. He got countered with Chris Colbert, um, and, and he dominated those fights. He dominated the Colbert fight. He dominated the, 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 the Avalon fight besides getting knocked down. So Again, and those guys aren't – well, Chris Colbert's real good. So those guys aren't – they can't hit like Tank. So this is going to this is gonna take a lot of discipline to fight this kind of fight. You know, he's going to have to find a perfect fight. Um, and like I said, if he, if he sluts down, if he lets Tank get in, in his comfort zone, if he lets Tank get in a rhythm, um, it could be over in a, it, it could be over quicker than you can shake a stick. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Officially, I'll give you my official prediction. I'm going to take Tank, tank Davis by eighth-round knockout. Um, I, I think, you know, Garcia's going to have some success early. I do. I, I, I think Hector Garcia is being un, overlooked here as an opponent, as a, as a tune-up. He's not bad. He's a good fighter. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Give me your predictions as well. Uh, it is 
Oh, please follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Uh, please follow Texas Boxing Scene as well. Uh, it's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's January 7th. It is fight night. It is January 7th, 2023. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.